In a suburb just south of Sydney, Gordon Haar is preparing his crop of vegetables for delivery, much as his family's done for over 70 years. There's been a Chinese market garden here for over a century. 20 varieties of Chinese and other vegetables are heading for the kitchens of local restaurants, to local greengrocers and to Flemington markets. A few kilometres up the road, local volunteers attending the recently established Waverley Park Communal Garden. It's an increasingly popular way to get outdoors, swap recipes and grab some fresh ingredients for the dinner table. More than 60% of Sydney's fresh produce is grown close to the city, the bulk of it coming from commercial gardens like Gordon's. But while urban agriculture of the Waverley kind is on the rise, Sydney's commercial farms are under threat. Within the metropolitan area of Sydney, you know, we have a lot of market gardens still and a lot of agricultural production at the periphery of, of the city. And that's a very rich and productive agricultural area that feeds the city of Sydney more than many people realize, I think. Those agricultural lands are under a lot of pressure because we need to house more and more people in the Sydney metropolitan area over the next 20, 30 years. In Gordon's case, the housing is for the dead. The farm he leases borders Botany Cemetery, fast running out of burial space. Plans are afoot to expand the cemetery at the expense of the farms. How we use urban land is shaping up as one of the biggest dilemmas of the 21st century. It's estimated that by 2050, twice as many of us will be living in cities. A booming population needs to be housed, but it also needs to be fed, and the cost of relying on imported food is already being felt. Not too long ago this year, uh, a drought affected uh, uh, the grain crops in Russia, which is a, they are a global uh, grain exporter. So I was in a, I was in a shop in a, in a, a bakery in Manica in, in Canberra, and I saw a sign on the wall of the baker saying, apologizing for the increase of cost of bread, but the Russian uh, uh, grain stocks are completely depleted due to drought. So we're already seeing these impacts in, in Australia today. We saw this very recently when bananas skyrocketed in price and no longer could we you know most of us couldn't afford a, a humble banana for quite some months because of the terrible storms on the north coast if we were growing more food across urban environments then we wouldn't be relying on one or two major sources of particular foodstuffs part of the solution lies in the planning of our cities building up rather than out into the urban sprawl. Increasing density in the already developed parts, we, can, we have a better chance of retaining those productive agricultural lands at the periphery. Um, having said that, I think within any city development, um, you're going to be looking for how you can build in open space that people can use for recreation in general, uh, but also certainly for garden space as well. While community gardens in the west can augment the food supply, in the developing world, it can be an entire survival strategy. These gardens in Freetown, Sierra Leone, were the city's lifeline during 10 years of civil war. Now they're recognised as an integral part of the city's infrastructure. It's something that actually has expanded because people found that it was a viable economic opportunity while also meeting their food needs. So the city uh, council has started an urban agriculture department and using some of the research that, that we had and others had come up with uh, to try to put together some sort of uh, policy framework to, uh, to formalize um, urban agriculture uh, in, in Freetown. It's an approach that could well show the way for the rest of the world. We have to sort of look at land use policies and zoning in relation to protecting those sorts of lands so that we do ensure that the fresh food is grown close to us so that it gets to us nice and fresh. The biggest challenge could be bringing our multiple layers of government to agreement. For Gordon Ha, it's a case of wait and see.